The fact that your personality can be affected by being the oldest sibling, middle child, youngest sibling, or an only child has been studied for years. Thousands of these psychological studies have been done over many years, and recent meta-analysis have come up with some reoccurring themes and ideas, so we're going to talk to you about them today. And we're going to discuss whether birth order can affect your personality. Well, what, what are you? I'm the youngest child, I think. <laughs> and I'm the middle child. Firstborns were seen to possess more of these types of qualities. One, higher academic achievements and ambition. Hi, sir. 92%? How the H-E double hockey stick am I supposed to become prime minister with this? Two, a stronger sense of responsibility and maturity. Oh, where's my wallet? You know how I never lose my wallet. I know, wallet. you're so responsible and mature, we all get it. And number three, better leadership skills than other birth orders. Firstborn children tend to get a lot more attention and affection from their parents because, I mean, it's their first kid, why not? But at the same time, there's also way higher expectations for them than their following siblings. The theory behind this is that it's sort of a self-fulfilling prophecy. If there's higher expectations placed on you, then you're more likely to work harder and want to live up to those expectations. Similarly, if someone thinks you're supposed to be the responsible one, you're more likely to take on that role. Middleborn children were seen to express more of these types of qualities. One, cooperative. Mitchell, put that down. Sorry. Two, flexible and sociable. No, man, don't worry about it. It's not a problem at all, you know? Dirt off my shoulder, there's no I in team. I got your back and you're broke for life. Three, able to make and maintain friendships easily. You're my best friend and you've been with me through thick and thin and I appreciate everything you've done for me. <laughs> Being the proverbial monkey in the middle, these children don't have the high expectations of the firstborn child, nor the leniency of the lastborn child. As a result, they tend to be less ambitious and competitive than their predecessors and have a more relaxed attitude towards life. The middle child is often a social butterfly. Because they receive less attention than their other siblings, they seek out more relationships and friendships outside of their family. The last born child, or the youngest of the group, tends to have these traits. One, they're charming and likable. How many Instagram followers do you have? I have like 250. I have 28.3 million. I just passed Kim K and I actually broke Snapchat with my little baby selfie. Two, they're possibly more creative than their older siblings. What you doing? I don't know, it's not very good, just doodling. You drew that? Three, they have a strong sense of security and confidence. C-O-N-F-I-T-E-N-T, -E that's me, I'm confident. I wanna see you be brave. I might be too strong head on compliments, overdosed on confidence. And number four, they're generally less responsible and mature than older siblings. <laughs> I forgot my phone, wallet, keys, and your shoes. Oh my god, what? This is often a case of been there, done that, as the parents have already had a bunch of kids, so their leniency is a lot higher and their expectations are much lower. However, being younger in the birth order often leads to a different sense of responsibility and often feeling like others will take the lead. Lone children are seen to have more of these traits. Academically able, creative, and resourceful. Well, actually, according to my research, the correct answer is... <laughs> actually, it's a lot deeper than that. You see, the information... <laughs> you can have that opinion, but the honest truth is that you're just not really understanding what's going on. Mature and responsible. Good thing I remembered your keys, phone, wallet, and my shoes. But they also tend to hate disorder and like to be in control. Ooh, can I see? Hey, cut it out. It's my phone, not yours. Hey there, bud. You want a beer? Oh, actually, I don't drink. Thanks. Want to try putting on makeup for the first time? I've never done that before, I don't want to. Being an only child, the expectations are always high. But unlike the firstborn, you never need to fight for your parents' attention. As a result, there's more potential to thrive in every sense of the word because your parents' attention is undivided. And growing up in a household of only adults would lead the child to emulate the specific actions of the parents, leading to more responsibility and maturity and also a very structured environment. Seeing as they have never had to compromise with their siblings and deal with the fact that there's always a lot of chaos in life, they sometimes have trouble relating to their peers and also feel very out of control when things in their life don't go their way. Now, of course, this is all super interesting, but there are a lot of extraneous variables from gender to socioeconomic status to age gap between siblings and how many siblings there are. But these are just some of the theories out there and it'll be interesting to see how they pertain to you. 
Do they? The theories do kind of pertain to me. I'm very irresponsible and way less mature <laughs> yeah, than my yeah. older sister. <laughs> um, I guess I am more creative and definitely more like outgoing than her. So that sort of uh, youngest child sort of does relate to me in some sense. Mm. And I'd say for me, I said I'm a middle child, but I also was a youngest child for about seven years. So I feel like some of the traits match up for me, but it might be a little confused because then maybe when I had my younger brother, I felt even like an older sibling or a first sibling. I don't know why I am. I, I really just yeah, summon not You're kind of a smorgasbord of all of them, so yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of tough. These supposed effects, though widely studied, have been mostly inconclusive in psychology. So though some aspects may be true for you, which makes a lot of sense, it wouldn't be the same for every single person around the world in a specific birth order. At the end of the day, it's important to remember that your personality and your destiny in life is not predetermined at birth. Thanks for watching this week's video. Let us know in the comments if any of these theories actually pertain to you and your birth order. Make sure to subscribe, follow us both on Instagram and Twitter, and we'll see you on Saturday for the vlog. Peace. Peace.